field work. Um, they will be receiving the annual monitoring reports for the PDAP, um, and they've, they've been fairly involved, at least as a listening stakeholder and, per, and commenting participant for like the Ventura Water Player Program's EIR. Great. Thank you so much. Sure. Commissioner McCombs. Um, just one question, Sarah. In terms of the timeline for the PCAP, the duration is three years. Was Is that on a water year basis or a calendar year basis and when did that is that considered to have started um that's a good question um that's not specified um in the the eir actually is the source of the pcap originally it's um pcap and mamper mitigation measures in the eir um and so it has started in 2022 so it'll be at least three full calendar years as of right now. Okay, thank you. Mr. McCord. Thank you, Sarah. This is really well done. I just have one question in one area, and that has to do with the uh, phase 1A and the PCAP. Um, correct me if I'm wrong, but um, as I understand it, we're re we're putting about seven to eight million gallons per day into the estuary. And that we have to reduce that in the future to about. Uh, 500,000 gallons per day. Uh, the goal of 1.9. Um, when do we have to achieve that? And then I guess my next question would be, I suppose we have to divert the balance. Under the Ventura water pure program. Have I got that right? Um, yes, the reduction to 1.9 million gallons per day is actually specifically during um, closed berm dry weather conditions. Um, and so there's certain conditions under which we're allowed to discharge to the estuary, such as when the berms open to the ocean, we could discharge higher than the CDL. Um, and the requirement of the consent decree um is to implement the discharge reduction by 2025 or in 2025 oh all right so though if uh, so okay i guess then that by 2025 we have to divert everything except 1.9 yeah and that's an average annual so it's not really a day sure day. sure okay thank you very much Commissioner Ackerman. Thank you, Sarah. Very informative uh, presentation. Um, to uh, ponytail on the back of that phase 1B then, uh, which is 0 to 0 0.5 million gallons a day, is that by 2030, am I correct? I believe that's consistent, yes. Okay. Consistent. And then my second question is, I'm not a fisherman, but are there steelhead now actively um, in the estuary and do they run the Santa Clara River? Um, they do occur in the Santa Clara River. They um, are an endangered species and they have relatively low abundance compared to the species up north. It's a, just a designated population segment down here that's federally listed. Um, I can't tell you actually at the moment if they're currently in the estuary or not. Um, they might be, they might not be. Um, but there is an anadromous steelhead run in the Santa Clara River. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Commissioner Breger. Uh, yes, I have a few questions. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, Sarah, um, I guess if you go to, to uh, I guess slide number 10, the PCAP permitting. Oh, I think our slide numbers might be a little they bit. They may vary a bit. Amelia, okay. I think you passed it already. Okay. There, there was a list of, yeah, you know, permits. And my question was, was, well, those, are those all the permits required for the PCAP? Um, let's let them all list out. 
to um, perform. Yeah, this, yes. these are all permits required for to perform the PCAP. Yes. Well, some of these bullets note if they're if the PCAP is a requirement of another permit, but most yeah. of this is required permits, yes. I see. And then if you go to the next uh, the next slide where they have the monitoring elements, it says. Mm -hmm. Now, um, I'm, sh I'm, I'm thinking this is uh, the year on here is 2000, it starts at October 2021. Mm -hmm. And then it goes to January of 2000. 22 the year we are now so we're about in March or so and I'm just wondering is this are we on schedule for this it's a good question um for some of these monitoring elements we are for some um their implementation was delayed by the need for some of those uh permits that got held up in the permitting process um, but the good news is that we will have three years of baseline data collection for all of the monitoring elements. We had a little bit of wiggle room in the startup there. Okay, and it, and it's possible to acquire all this data for that 2000, would you say 23? 25. 25, oh boy. Yeah, um, yeah I think it should be, should be uh, possible. Um, and so, so you're pretty much, I mean, you're behind, could, some elements you're behind, but uh, for the most part, you're, you're on schedule. Yeah, and I think maybe a different way to characterize it is whether or not they occurred in this water year or if they will occur in the next three water years. Um, okay. The real example of that, I guess, is the fish sampling in October of 2021. It's one example, um, and the, Shorebird surveys, we didn't have a permit from state parks yet until the winter. So those won't occur in water year 2021, 2022, but they will in the next three. Four okay, years. and and you'll update this uh, this table here as you know, as we move on, right? Mm -hmm. Yes, this one's just the kind of um, projected calendar view. Okay. Um, doesn't necessarily mean that something's been done or not been done. It's just the schedule. Okay, if that helps. Uh, sure. Now, the next slide after this is a, uh, I don't know, an overview there. there. Now, where is the, I see this is, you know, city of Ventura and then the estuary area here. Um, so, where the city, below that is the city of Oxnard. Um, yeah, someone else can jump in if I get this wrong, but the Santa Clara River is approximately the division of, between the city of Ventura and the city of Oxnard. Okay. And so. That's correct. So does, does the city of Oxnard have any say into this or, or, or do they chime in on any of this work that you guys are doing or I'm just curious. Um, I might bounce that question to someone who's been around. A little longer than I, Susan, or I don't know if Vince is a participant. If they don't have the answer, we could get back to you on that. Too. Okay, all right. I was just wondering I, because I can I can jump in on that really quick. Okay. Um, yes, uh, uh, the city of Oxnard does not have any input on this. Their wastewater facility is on the south side of Oxnard near Wainimi Pier, and uh, they do not uh, have any any uh, any. Uh, interest in this project here what we're doing okay okay uh and then let me see um okay that okay i think you had there was a the there was a pcap budget summary that wasn't shown here were, were you intended i have it in my packet was it intended to be shown oh yes that's intended if anyone has a question that, that requires it um, well, I'm always, uh, whenever I see a, you know, budget sheet, the first thing that comes to my head or, or out of my mouth is, is time and, and, uh, budget, you know, where are you at with the budget and are you within budget and, uh, are you within schedule? Mm -hmm. Um, Amelia, could you jump down to the end of the presentation? There's one more. 
slide after that. It looks like the total budget is 1.47 million. For this three year or whatever the term of this duration. Let's see if she can pull it up one second. So the um, the budget shown here is actually including rollover from a previous amount, um, and so this was um, available funds for the fiscal year. Um, the ongoing PCAP um, implementation will be considerably less expensive in subsequent years because of startup. Costs, I guess you could say, um, such as purchase of a vehicle and writing um, monitoring element, uh, standard operating procedures, purchase of um, lots of um, monitoring equipment. So those are kind of one time large items that won't reoccur. But this is this budget is for fiscal year 2021, 2022. Um, we are not anywhere close to spending this much right now. Uh, due to permitting delays, we um, have spent less with the other professional services than originally anticipated this fiscal year. Let me okay. turn off my videos. I tried it, but I think it's making me lag. Now, is, is, it, is it, are you there? Yeah, I'm here. I just had to stop my video. Oh. It's like causing lag. So. Okay. Now, is this your budget? This you're responsible for this budget. What, what is it? One or um, one point four, one one and a half million dollar budget to do this? Is that what it is? Um, yes, this is the estuary monitoring budget, which is um, housed within the wastewater budget. But it's not the PCAP budget. Um, I guess you could say that's kind of synonymous. Okay, um, it's one and the same. Okay. Yes. Okay, so uh, you you know, I guess this represents one year of spending. This one, one point one million. Um, it's what was authorized for the fiscal year. Um, okay. but you we're haven't... we're not going to end up spending this much in the fiscal year. So some will be rolled over for um, fiscal year twenty twenty two and twenty twenty three, and then supplemented if needed. You can see on the far right, the balance for other professional services actually is the total amount um, allocated in budget column minus yeah. um, encumbrances. Right. Okay, so are you pretty much happy with this budget? Um, yes, we haven't had to spend it all this year due to permitting delays, so I'm um, working with my consultant to determine how much rollover will be needed and how much additional funds for next year, but it should be smaller than this for next year. Okay. All right. And uh, that was all my questions. Thank you. And that was a good presentation, by the way, Sarah. Thank you. Okay. And I just have a brief comment. Sarah, you did a terrific job of taking something extremely complex and explaining yeah. it in a way that is easy to understand and I appreciate that. And I appreciate that we have you here to manage this. So many permits and so many different types of tasks. It's a, it's amazing to even keep track of it. So keep up the <laughs> work you. and thank you for the briefing. You're welcome. I think that's it for this item. And the next item is Ventura water pure staffing. And I believe it'll be presented by Linda Sumansky. Good evening, Chair Mulligan and Commissioners. Um, just wanted to make sure you could hear me. I didn't have a chance to do a mic check earlier. We can hear you. Okay, thank you. I'm going to leave my camera off because actually WebEx is not recognizing the camera on either of my computers. So unfortunately, you'll just get to hear a voice. So um, this is Linda Szymanski. I'm actually the Ventura Water Pure Program Director and um, 
we're here this evening to talk a little bit about staffing. This was something that was requested at the last meeting and actually had been requested approximately a year ago that we come back and revisit staffing for the Ventura Water Peer Program. So next slide, please. So I wanted to start out with um, the staffing for the Advanced Water Purification Facility. And I know there have been a number of different um, staff staffing plans that have been presented and different numbers that people have seen. Um, what I wanted to start out with here, um, the column on the far left actually shows the number of staff 24 that is shown in the engineering report that is being put together for the regional board and the Department of Drinking Water. Um, Chair Mulligan, I think that you had reviewed this and pointed out this number. So I wanted to start with this one. Um, I don't know if other folks had had a chance to review the engineering report, but these are the figures of the number of staff that were in there. And I think that there was some concern that this number seemed to be a little large. Um, I did have a chance to sit down with the operations folks and we put together a very preliminary schedule. Um, what's in the second column is the number of staff that we believe is needed based on having some remote coverage at the advanced water purification plant, um, meaning that our operators would be working 10 hour, 10 hour days, um, four days a week. Um, it also shows some staffing that we had not um, brought forward before, but folks who are going to be needed um, as part of the uh, Ventura Water Pure program. And that includes some laboratory analysts, um, environmental compliance, um, someone, a management analyst who is helping to look at all the finances that are going on and the bills that need to be paid and then um, a secretary to help keep everything organized. So if you look at that total, um, we're, we're projecting about 15 folks um, to be part of the operations staff for the advanced water treatment plant and the program. You know, this is our best guess at this point. Um, this will actually end up being reviewed with the Department of Drinking Water and the Regional Board, and they will comment on the number of staff that we are proposing. Taking a look at the type of instrumentation and monitoring that we are doing and making sure that we can reliably operate the plant at the staffing level. So in the in the two columns on the right, what I wanted to do was kind of break this down more in kind of a per shift type of um, comparison. So the the um, the column on the proposed staff per shift is actually taking the number of staff based on the remote coverage and then projecting how many people will actually be on a shift working. And so you can see that the numbers here actually um, equal out to 11 to 13. And that's because we will have some overlap on some days with operators. So. Um, and what I wanted to do with that was actually compare that to someone that you may you are slightly familiar with. I think many of the commissioners had a chance to visit the water replenishment district with us. And I actually spoke with them and got the, you know, what their actual operating shift looks like as far as number of people. And so you can see that the difference um, is you know they have i did not actually get the information from them on you know laboratory and some of the environmental compliance and kind of other more admin type of staff with a management analyst and secretary but you can see from you know basically the the maintenance worker up to the uh, management uh, the um, chief plant operator we're, we're very much in line with how um, we're we're projecting staff versus what WRD is actually running, so we felt like we were fairly much um, in line with with what we were proposing. So um, 
one thing I do want to note for the WRD numbers, um, they are working a um, with remote coverage. So they are working 10 hour days, but they are also under contract. And so they do not necessarily need to have the same number of people that we would need to have to cover the, the shifts um, because their contract, um, all of that is managed by the folks who are running the contract. And so, you know, as far as WRD is concerned, these are the number of people who are going to show up. It doesn't necessarily mean that it is the same person and, you know, they, the, the person who is doing Linda, the Linda, you're cutting out a little bit. I'm sorry. So is that a little bit better? Can anyone, is it, can everyone else hear her? Yeah, I can hear her. I can hear her. Is it just me? Yes, I can, I can hear her well. Yeah. No okay. Problem. It's just me. All right. So that, that was really all I wanted to cover on the operations portion of it. And I can certainly take any questions at, at the end of the presentation. So next slide, please, Amelia. I also wanted to cover the Ventura Water Pure program staffing. I think this is a an org chart that you all had seen as part of the council um, report on Ventura Water Pure. And basically what it's showing is that there were nine positions that were allocated um, with various different titles um, for the Ventura Water Pure staffing. Um, as far as the actual um, budget was concerned, there are actually no names associated with the positions. It's just nine positions and we're filling them actually as, as um, appropriate for actually the program itself. Um, you can see that there also were some outside consultants that were thought that we would have as part of the program staffing. So I wanted to show you what we what it actually looks like for us. So next slide, please, Amelia. This, this is more of how the program is, is actually operating. And it, it looks a lot more complicated, but it, it's really, really not all that complicated. Um, along the center is the city of Ventura. And, you know, the staff that is, um, those nine positions from the previous slide are all under the city of Ventura. Um, the reason I showed all these folks is I wanted to make sure that everyone realized that it's really not just the Ventura Water Pure staff that is working on this project. It is truly a village project and, you know, the Ventura Water Department is integrally involved in this. Um, you know, finance, the city attorneys, um, you know, it's taking the city to actually um, run this program and I, I did want to give thanks to everybody who has and is continuing to participate as part of this program. So um, to get back to the nine positions, um, the positions that were on the previous slide are actually numbered. You can see them under the city of Ventura. So there will be five staff that are dedicated um, purely to the Ventura Water Pure program. Um, myself as the director, we have hired the principal engineer, that's Adam Vigilski. Um, we have hired the senior management analyst, that's Aaron Barry. Um, we have hired the management technician. Um, this is day two for her, that's Kelly Prather. And we are in the process of, of hiring an associate assistant engineer. Um, we held interviews and so we're um, in the process of making selections for that. So hopefully that person will be on board, hopefully by May. So those will be you know, direct staff for Ventura Water, uh, the Ventura Water Pure. Um, if you go down a little bit further, you'll see that position six is actually um, working in the city manager's office and in the communications team. Um, that person does do a fair amount of work for Ventura Water Pure. They also have other assignments um, within the city manager's office and the communications team. 
So um, the hours that they work on the Ventura Water Pure program are being charged to the vent to the various CIP projects that they are working on. Um, the seventh position is actually working in the community development department. Um, with the short staff that the community development department has had, they were really not able to give the attention to Ventura Water Pure that we needed. Um, there are a lot of um, things that would need to go through, which they just don't have dedicated staff for. So there is actually a, a consultant who is working you know, in the community development department who will re be reviewing all of the land onshore portions of the, the coastal zone um, components. So uh, the biggest piece of that that they'll be working on is actually the annexation and permitting for the piece of property for the advanced um, purification plant. And then the positions eight and nine have not been filled and most likely will not be filled. Um, one of those positions has actually been transferred to water um, for their use. And then we have one position remaining, but like I said, we don't have any plans to fill it at this point. Um, just to kind of fill you in on some of the other folks who are helping with the project, um, you can see on the left hand side that we do have a number of consultants who are helping with the project. Um, we are in the process of negotiating with an owner's advisor and hope to take that to council on March 28th. Um, ESA continues to help us with our planning and permitting. Um, we have hired someone specifically to help us with the MPDES permitting that we need to do. Um, we do have a contract with WSC um, for outreach and communications. Um, their contract is mostly for helping us with the graphics and those types of things. Um, our in-house communication folks are actually helping us with the planning of our outreach. And then we also have um, outside legal counsel that is helping us out, and that is Nossaman. Um, on the design and construction side, um, most of these have not progressed far enough, um, but I did want to point out that we do have HDR um, on as a consultant to do the design for the outfall and the concentrate line. Um, that is a design bid build project, so we will be eventually bidding this project and then bringing in construction management. Um, the outfall pump station, um, actually, we are planning on taking that design contract to council for approval on March 28th. Um, that is HDR also. So again, it is um, design bid build, so we will eventually be putting it out to bid and hiring a contractor and a construction management person. Um, the other, the other um, projects under the program, the water purification plant, um, the work that needs to other work that needs to be done at the reclamation plant, um, the groundwater, um, IPR portion of it, and some of the pipelines haven't progressed far enough along for us to really show anything other than to be determined at this point. So, um, next slide, please, Amelia. And that's it. That's all I uh, brought to present tonight. I'm happy to address any questions you have. Okay. Amelia, has anyone submit, submitted public comments or indicated that they wish to speak on this item? Yes, we do have somebody who wishes to. Oh, sorry. No, we, we do not. <laughs> My apologies. We do not. Okay. All right. I think we'll do commissioner uh, questions and comments together. Um, and let's start with commissioner Clyde. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for the presentation. Um, I uh, am a little bit confused as I go through the uh, different graphs to link the different positions with the different titles that they have. Like, for example, um, position three on slide three is um, technician liaison 
And then on the next slide, it's position three is senior management analyst. Is I'm a little confused about the relationship between that um, uh, staffing chart and this more detailed program staffing that you have. Could you explain that a little bit better? Sure. The reason it's confusing because there isn't truly a connection other than the number of people. So um, the the original org chart, um, it was you know, conjecture of the type of folks and who would be needed to actually manage the program. Um, those were the folks that, you know, before anyone was hired, um, folks thought that might be needed as part of the program. You know, as as the program has progressed, we've seen that the folks that we actually really need to have on staff are somewhat different than the folks who are who were shown in that original org chart. So really the only connection right now is the number and we're, we're trying to staff the program in an appropriate way so that, you know, we have the folks that we need and, you know, are able to supplement and do the work at, as, as necessary. Okay, and then going back to your first slide with the number, different numbers of staff, thank you. Um, it is the um, so I know you're we're we're all in process with this. So is the proposed staff per ship? This is assuming a fully operational plant, and it's your best guess right now, or is this pretty realistic? Where where do you stand on that? Yeah, I, I'd say that this is our best guess. I think it's pretty realistic. I mean, we did sit down and kind of talk through and actually put a schedule together for something that seemed appropriate to us. Um, and this is this is all going to have to be run by the regional board and the Department of Drinking Water. But we feel like, you know, kind of comparing what we've put together versus someone who is operating that we're in the ballpark. Okay, and then um, uh, another question on this chart, the WDR staff per shift, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, how does the, the size of that plant compare to what we're anticipating? For it is, yeah, it is going to be roughly the same size. So it is a comparable size plant. Okay, and then I know that uh, recently the, um, I think it's DDW. I can't remember which agency is considering uh, direct potable reuse, um, and uh, one of the concerns is spikes that might come through a treatment plant. And so the question then is, if we have remote coverage uh, after hours for some of this, is that is that the is that safe? Is that going to be acceptable to the state? Is it acceptable risk to us? Mm -hmm. um, has, has that been considered? It, it is being considered and it'll be part of what we, we talk to DDW about. Um, you know, we are certainly going to have to explain to them, you know, the types of controls that we have, the type of monitoring that we have. Um, the way we alarm and, you know, the, the way that, you know, if something does happen, that the plant would be shut down. So all of that will go into their determination about whether we should be or shouldn't be operating remotely. Um, another big piece of this um, the is the environmental compliance, something that we hadn't had on the list before. But that has to do more with the sources and a lot of monitoring that we'll need to be doing on with our sources, which is a portion that DDW will make us have. But that will actually allow us to be very proactive about what is coming from the folks who are producing wastewater. So this is uh, potential impacts from say illegal dumping or accidental releases that might impact our wastewater treatment uh, plant. Is that what you're 
Okay. Correct. Yeah, there okay. there will be monitoring within the system, and then we'll also be looking at the various sources and making sure that you know they are producing what they said they would produce based on their permit. Okay. Very good. Um, I think that's that's it for my questions. Thank you very much. Oh, sorry. Next, sorry, lost my page. Commissioner Hubner, comments. Thank you. Um, I have some uh, relatively extensive comments on this particular item, so I, I ask for a little bit of uh, lenience. Um, good evening, commissioners, mature water staff, members of the public. I prepared a few comments on this item. I'll be providing as part of some of my experience with public agency staffing in the water wastewater realm. I want to first start with stating that the staff report is correct and that we as the commission have been following this particular issue since first identified in the draft EIR specifically for the originally proposed 25 positions and going back as far as 2018 and 2019. But I would note that this item was not a result of discussion solely linked to the EIR or some other discussion for the Ventura Water Project, but an actual requirement set forth in the motion approved by this commission back at our January 2021 meeting resulted in the commission's recommended approval to the city council of an increase in the increased water wastewater rates. This is an important point. So first, let me relate to you my experience as a district administrator, general manager of a wastewater treatment plant in South Slope, Slope County, San, South San Luis Obispo County. District and wastewater treatment plant was staffed with a total of eight positions, including myself, one secretary, one chief plan operator, one lead operator, three other operators, and one laboratory technician. In addition to the other duties, the secretary did the bookkeeping and clerking for the district supporting the board. This for a wastewater treatment plant with an average dry weather flow of approximately 4 million gallons per day, but rated up to 12 million. Our operators were multitasked, putting the repair and maintenance of the wastewater treatment. The lab technician also supported the plant operators. The sampling was done on a routine basis, but was not a full-time job. Certain laboratory functions were contracted out. The CPO and the lab technician completed the compliance report and each supported each other. I also reviewed today the Ventura Water Org chart from January 2021. This was also distributed to the uh, commissioner, so uh, at some point, uh, please review that. It lists 52 positions in both the wastewater and water division. There are listed seven laboratory technicians. The general manager, the assistant general managers, the water and the wastewater managers all have secretary and management analysts. Proposed Ventura Water Pier facility staffing, and I'm talking about operations here, proposes 15 positions for an approximate 2.5 million gallon per day facility. The secretary, one management analyst, one environmental compliance, two utility mechanical electrical workers, and others. Total cost of these positions, I estimate with benefits, is likely in the 1.5 to $2 million annually. Limiting five of these positions could save between half a million to a million annually, and over 20 years, 10 to 20 million. Again, these are just estimates course, but based on my experience of staffing other positions. My big concern, once filled, that these positions never go, never go away, regardless of need. And it also appears that this Ventura Water Pier is planned as a separate enterprise, separate from the other water division, the wastewater division. Recently, I assisted the City of Santa Paula with analysis of their current wastewater operations and a cost benefit of in-house staffing versus contract. In that analysis, we were required to look at treatment plant staffing in comparison to other Ventura County public agencies, looking at salaries and staffing levels, to determine appropriate comparative staffing versus cost. It should be noted that five operator positions, half management and some administrative support, is needed to operate Santa Paula's 4.2 million gallon per day treatment. The point of me bringing this up was that the city, at a cost to them, needing this information and data to inform them about an annual 
wastewater operation staffing uh, needed this information to determine the best cost effective efficient option for the city of Santa Paula's rate payer. Lastly, I'd like to relate my county of Ventura experience where we had to undergo rigorous justification process to obtain approval for each and every new position requested, including job sharing and outsourcing and contract opportunities. This was also the case when the position was authorized, but not yet filled. I don't believe a detailed narrative justification is completed for each of these positions. Uh, looking at the presentation we received today in comparison with one water replenishment district. I believe a detailed justification for each position is necessary, similar to what the county and other public agencies require. In comparison with other public agencies and similar water peer projects, including the one proposed in San Diego, Central Coast, and Monterey. So there are other water peer projects either in design, proposed, or, or nearing completion. This review, this review should be independently conducted with commission review. Absent that completion of that analysis that truly justifies more operational staff, or if the proposed future water for your staff is not cut from the 15, perhaps as much as half, I don't believe I can support either future upcoming rate increases that would support these positions. Thank you for your time and listening to my comments. This evening. Thank you. Commissioner McCombs. No comments or questions. Thank you. Commissioner McCord. Um, no questions. Thank you. Commissioner Ackerman. I just want to say thank you, Linda, for your work here in your presentation, and also thank you to Commissioner Hubner for his experience and understanding the staffing issues. I think both are uh, very important. So we'll have further discussion, I'm sure. Thank you. Commissioner Brager. Yes, I have a question. Uh, Linda, uh, by the way, good, uh, good presentation. Um, this. Uh, I'm looking here at the, the staffing slide here. Um, I think it was maybe the one before that. And this was, uh, is, this, is this staffing based on what type of uh, delivery system on this project? Um, so, actually, actually, what are, yeah, let, let me step in here for a minute. Okay, um, thank you. Since Linda was not here during this time, um, what happened with the Ventura Water Pier program and staffing? What happened is we went to City Council. Um, there was an admin report done, um, completed, and we looked at potentially these nine positions, knowing that once we hired a program director, they may have some differences in opinion of what is really needed for this kind of project, because that's why we hired a program director. And we hired Linda because she has the expertise. And so what was put into the rate study also were these nine positions and the actual operational positions are not included in the rate study or budget until 2025. So we included these nine positions and we haven't, as, as Linda mentioned, we haven't hired everybody. They've been uh, juggled a little bit. Um, again, we're not gonna hire someone if we don't need that position filled at this time. So this was just an estimate and proposed at the time. I hope okay. that answers your question. Oh, yeah, it certainly, it certainly did. And uh, so HDR, you guys are gonna let those contracts out, what is it, next week or whatever, and um, for the outfall and the concentrate, or that, yeah, the outfall. And that's gonna be, I think you mentioned that, did, um, Linda, design, bid, and build? Yes, Commissioner oh. Greger. Um, the, the HDR um, contract for the outfall and the concentrate line was actually let um, back in July, and that is a design, bid, build project. Okay, all right. And then, and then another thing, these positions that you have here, these, this is, we're still early on the, 
you know, for the positions on this project, right? I mean, you're still trying to figure out what's really needed, what's not. It's going to be, like you said, reviewed by other agencies and such. And um, so it's not in stone yet. Is that correct? That's correct. Okay. And then uh, also these positions you mentioned, some of them may or may not be filled. They'll still be in the budget. However, they won't be filled. Uh, those will be um, uh, money saved, right? Commissioner not... Breger, I'll, I'll stop and step in here real quick. Um, okay, we are going you, over. Our, yeah, sure. We're we're just now going over our budget. In fact, we have another budget meeting next week, um, or actually tomorrow. And so, one of the things that we do is again with our budget and also our rate study, making sure they're in sync with each other. And so, we'll be talking to city manager's office and other departments on what the needs are for Ventura Water Pier in the future. And so, okay. this will go forward to city council for approval in May, June. Okay. All right, well, I've, you know, it's still, I think it's still a little early and you're still working out the, you know, the issues here and, and that just happens. That's just standard with agency, you know, personnel and budgeting. And so, uh, uh, anyway, that's all I have to say. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Linda, I have a couple of questions. You said the water replenishment district had eight staff per shift. It was my understanding they had eight total staff. Do they actually have more than eight staff working there? They they have eight staff. They have one, you know, basically one shift per day. They they do a um a ten hour ten hour day, seven days a week. And so for the time that folks are there, they have eight folks. Um, and then they operate remotely for the remainder of the time. So why would Ventura not build a plant with remote operations capability? Staff's very expensive. Why would we not do the same? We we are planning on doing the same. Okay. Yeah. Um, you know, and again, you know, it it is certainly our intention to put in the ability um, to, you know, help DDW agree with us that we can remote we can operate remotely for a, you know a portion of the day so it's it's our intention to to have that same 10 hour a day with remote operation that's our intention okay that's good yes i would think the plant should be designed for that whatever yes. is necessary for yes. DW. yes okay thanks um i i do have some comments though um, this, this analysis really isn't what I was expecting when we asked for it a year ago. Um, it's, it's a bit more cursory than I thought. Um, I'm accustomed to the process that Commissioner Huber described for justifying new positions. When I worked at Cayugas Municipal Water District for 25 years, we had a very rigorous, detailed justification process. Um, but as to what I see here, I think we all need to bear in mind that this is a very small water treatment plant. Um, it, it is, Linda, I think that the WRD plant produces 10,000 acre feet a year, which is over three times as big. So you can double check that. Um, but this is very small, 2,800 acre feet per year, maybe 4,000 if estuary studies show that more can be diverted. And I agree with um, Commissioner Huebner. I looked at what the cost would be based on Ventura water salaries and benefits for comparable positions. And I think it's over 1.5 million. And I think that about 500,000 of it is probably unnecessary. Um, just as background at Cayugas, I was responsible for operating a water treatment plant 20 times larger than water pure. And we had a much smaller staff than what is proposed here. Um, just a few examples of the positions I don't think are needed. Um, I don't think two lab analysts are necessary. Probably none are. Um, the lab work should be able to be done either by operators or one of the eight existing lab employees at the wastewater division or sent to a contract lab. And I would just note that when I looked this up, I was really surprised to see that Ventura has so many lab employees. You know, most similar size water and wastewater agencies have one or two. Um, to minimize costs, usually utilities have their employees perform only analyses that have to be done on site and solicit bids from labs to do contract labs to do the rest. 
So I wouldn't think any additional lab analysts should be necessary. Um, also, two electrical mechanical workers, again, for such a small plant, one should be sufficient. Um, and a secretary, I, I find it really hard to imagine why a treatment plant would need one. Um, at Cayugas, our entire operations and maintenance staff of 50 people shared one secretary, and she did fleet management and purchasing as well. You know, our staff took care of a lot of their own work. A lot is electronic now. Um, and a management analyst as well. The chief operator ought to have the skills necessary to do plant administrative and finance budget tracking work. If that person needs help, it would be a lot better to contract the work out to a consulting firm rather than burdening the city with long term salary obligations. Um, I think we might ought to seriously consider the water replenishment district model if they're able to operate with a staff of 8 rather than 15 and they don't need all these extra positions. Um, I think the city should seriously consider uh, hiring contract labor who can operate that way. Um, Commissioner Huber mentioned that that was part of the analysis that Santa Paula did. I think that that would be a reasonable thing to analyze for this plant. Is it more cost effective to do contract operations rather than staffing this in house? Um, Commissioner Mulligan, can I make a comment on that one very quickly? Um, I yeah. did not act. I did not actually check with the water replenishment district on some of those other um, folks that they may have on staff. I I just don't know. I, I all I checked with them on was just the operations portion. I did not check to see if they had you know any extra lab analysts or you know any of the other folks. So I can't say that they don't have them. I just don't know. Okay, I'll I'll take your uh, your word on that. I I concur. I still do think that you know chief operators and lead operators ought to be able to do some of the uh, work that is assigned here to a management analyst and a secretary. Um, the, the secretary is really a surprise. Um, anyway, I I just am really uncomfortable with these numbers. Uh, some of these positions just don't make sense to me in terms of what's reasonable for a treatment plant, what's typical for treatment plants in this county or anywhere else. Um, I think Ventura needs to be operating at least to cost effectively as other agencies. I was expecting when we asked for this a year ago, some kind of comparison and some kind of real um, justification based on other plants and how people operate and not just one and sort of a partial. Um, and Again, a real narrative description of what these people are going to do all day. What in the world is a secretary going to do all day? So I, I'm I'm frustrated by this. I'm concerned about it. Once you hire an employee, you cannot get rid of that position. They're a very high part of the budget for utility. And I too am just really uncomfortable supporting a rate increase that includes these labor costs. So, you know, I don't know what we do over the next couple of months, but I have a, an awful lot of heartburn with this. So anyway, that wasn't what I was hoping to have happen tonight. Um, do any Chair of Mulligan. the other commission? Yeah. Sorry, Chair Mulligan. Um, again, the rates do not reflect all of the operations. Those do not come into the rates until the year 25. So it says that the rate study conducted by Reptelis shows O&M costs for operators in fiscal year 25-26 for 16 people. I presume that's in the rate model that they did for uh, to calculate the rates for this next year. Yeah, and we can we can take a look at that with Reptelis. I think it would be very important to to let me know how the rates would be different. Maybe it isn't substantially if if this number were lower, if the staffing number were lower. I get that rate increases are needed, but th this is just challenging. So I know you're going to present that to us next month. I think that would be very helpful. Um, do any of the other commissioners have um, any comments? And I'm going to just go through you because I can't see anybody. My video isn't working. Um, Commissioner Kleit. Uh, I am going to defer to the commissioners who have direct experience with uh, water agencies operating them and being involved in them. That's really outside my experience. So 
I, I really can't comment on the technical merits of what was just presented, but uh, I'm hearing concern. And so that makes me concerned about, um, you know, that we perhaps really do need a more detailed study and a comparative study uh, on some of the plants of similar size or maybe even different size, but that we can use to reflect on what's actually needed. So I appreciate uh, Commissioner Hoopner and Commissioner Mulligan's comments. Thank you. Commissioner Hubner. Uh, nothing really to add. Uh, appreciate uh, Chair Mulligan, your your comments uh, um, put forth, um, and and just hearing uh, Commissioner uh, Clyde's comments as well. So um, obviously, I have a lot of concerns. Um, I understand what rate increases are about. I supported it when we enacted it, but I have grave concerns about the operational proposed operational sta staffing. Uh, I encourage the staff. Look to other agencies. I've mentioned a few of them that are doing water pure projects and bring back that information and convince us that uh, that these positions are warranted. So I'll, I'll leave it at that. Thank you. Thank you. Commissioner McCombs. I'll just underscore what Gerhardt said, and that is I think, you know, I obviously like Nova, I don't have the technical experience in. Um, in the field of managing water agencies, but I do have an awful lot of financial analysis experience and I would agree with your assessment, Susan, that this is not the, the report I expected to receive after waiting for a year. Um, I feel we have a fiduciary responsibility to the citizens of Ventura and what's been provided so far doesn't justify to me the level of staffing that's shown here. Thank you. Commissioner McCord. Um, I, I cannot build on the um, comments by the other commissioners that places this in serious doubt. Um, we need to look elsewhere, do comparative staffing studies, and when we did our rate increases, you know, there were those who were predicting that because of the staff increases that what was going to cost for Ventura Water Pure wasn't really 200 that million dollars or 250, it was going to double when you add all the people back. I didn't know, and I don't, I too do not have the professional experience to determine what's necessary for, to operate a, a plant look that's much smaller than other plants. So I join, I'm going to say, not in the negative comments, but the question, the comments about the questionable validity of these estimates. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Ackerman. I agree with the following comments. Uh, also, uh, wages and uh, salary and benefits are forever. And when you start adding more people than we planned on in our budget, uh, it could be a significant problem for our rate payers. Thank you. Commissioner Breger. Yes, I, um, I too agree with the, with the commissioner's comments. Uh, we probably should compare with other agencies and other projects that are similar to this. And uh, I think it's always good to, you know, run lean um, and uh, hopefully, you know, we can do this with this project. So uh, I have no more comments. Thank you. So Linda and Susan, you have our concerns. I leave it to you to uh, think about that and address them as we go forward and as we consider rates over the next couple of meetings. Thank you. All right. Next item is comprehensive water resources report. Uh, Monica, and you will have to tell me how to pronounce your name as well. Knowing? Yeah, and actually Jen Jennifer is gonna give the report. Oh, good, okay. <laughs> Jennifer. M Monica did a big a big chunk of it, but um, she she got off and didn't have to do the 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 video today, she did it last time. So now it's Jenny's turn back. Okay, <laughs> Jenny. Okay, good evening. Can everyone hear me okay? Okay. Uh, yes. 
Okay, so we're going to go over the draft comprehensive water resources report. The draft was in the packet. Um, I'm going to go over some highlights um, here tonight. So next. Okay, so the CWRR is an, an annual analysis of the balance of short term and long term water supply and demand. Uh, it's a standardized method to estimate water supply demands for development projects. Um, the first. Uh, CWR was in 2013 at the request of city council. And then following that 1 city council directed staff to provide annual updates. On projected water supply and demand and to use local demand factors. Uh, to standardize, um, the estimate of. Demand for proposed development projects, um, and then. The comprehensive water resources report also establishes whether water shortage exists. And if so, what shortage state is recommended. Uh, following the 2020 water shortage event contingency plan. Next. Okay, there was a few, it's just a couple of comments from the 2021 CWR um, to consider here. Um, one was a request to reduce the length of the overall report and to shorten the executive summary. Um, we did attempt to shorten the executive summary. Um, I don't, if, if folks have specific Comments on reducing the length of the report, we will um, take those into consideration, but we did not try to shorten the report intentionally this year. Next. Okay, so this year we just made the standard revisions to the report. Um, you know, based, you know, the, our, the water loss factor, the water loss factor is not in the draft because um, as was explained. In the um, staff report, we are having a bit of an issue with our um, getting the data out of our consumption database, uh, the billing database, um, translating it into the consumption data. So, as a placeholder um, in the draft, we use the production data. Um, so, what's what what we'll tease out for the final is what part of that production was consumption and what part of its water loss. But overall, that's the amount of water that we we produced. Um, so we use that as a placeholder for now. Um, and then we looked at um, baseline demand utilizing the five year average um, from from past five year demand average. Um, it includes water supply projections for each water supply source um, based on um, current drought conditions, regulatory changes, and current operational constraints. Um, and then we made a few more changes to section six this year, um, focusing uh, on the near term and then and then copying over discuss or numbers from the urban water management plan and discussing them um, in the in the um, future section. Um, and then uh, in section six is also the, sh the shortage stage declaration. Next. Okay, so before we get to the demand and supply projections for 2022, um, I wanted to go over um, We lost you. Not sure if we lost you, Jenny. We can't hear you. Can you? Okay, you're just, I think you're, I'm back. Sorry. Had there, to... Yep, there you are. Can you hear me now? Yeah, go ahead, Jenny. Yes. Okay. Okay. Um, I'm not sure where I dropped off, um, but I'll start 
So we're just this slides to go over the 2021 projections versus actuals. Um, starting at the top, our allocation from Lake Casitas was 3798 and we came pretty close to that at 3721 acre feet. Um, Ventura River, uh, the 736 was based on um, when we thought that the river was going to drop below 4 CFS and 3 CFS. Um, we were able to get a little bit more water out of the river last year at 1364 before those thresholds were met. Um, the Mound Basin um, came in below expectations. We had some operational issues with the wells there. And um, as I'll talk about later, Mound well, uh, two and three are not yet online. Um, and then Oxnard Plain Basin, I think the lower number there is just that we didn't need, um, we didn't need to utilize the entire allocation based on demands. Um, and then Santa Paula Basin, we also had um, Satakoi Well Free was down for part of the year. And recycled water usage was up a little bit uh, this year as well. And then at the bottom, it shows that we um, estimated 14,210 for uh, demands, and we're looking at 14,619. Again, that number might be a little bit high, does not include water loss. So in the final report, we'll um, finalize that number. Next. Okay, uh, so this slide goes over um, the baseline demand calculation. Um, and it, as you can see here, so we're not, we are seeing some increases in demand, but it's not a steady increase in demand year over year. It's really the demand trends are mirroring the rainfall patterns. So in, in wetter year, in wetter years like 2017 and 2019, you're seeing uh, decreases in usage. And in drier years, um, like this past year, you're seeing increases in usage. Um, and we, we anticipated that we would see an increase in usage. Um, and again, this number is also potentially a little bit high. So we'll adjust that in the final. Well, actually, no, that, that's the right number because it would include the water loss there. Okay, next. Okay, so um, table 3-4 of the report calculates the expected water demands of projects approved or under construction as of December 2021. Um, these projects are expected to be using water over the next five years. Uh, the majority of the projects are multifamily residential. Uh, the estimated water demands um, of the total of 833 um, is lower than our estimated total for the last um, couple of years based on the projects. Next. Okay, so for um, projected demand, um, Table 3.6 adds those projected demands from, from Table 3.4 uh, from the development projects to the five-year average baseline demands and then projects those out to 2030. Uh, like I said, demands from the current projects are spread evenly over the next five years and then um, a growth factor of 0.54% is utilized to project growth out to 2030. And this is the same method we've used for the past several years. Next. Okay, so now we're gonna switch over to um, supply. Um, and so um, these, this water supply capacity, these represent our allocations that we have for the Santa Paula Basin, the Oxnard Plain Basin and Casitas. Um, and then for Mound Basin and Ventura River, those numbers are really based on our pumping capacity. Um, we don't have an explicit allocation for Mound Basin. We, we, we um, sort of intend uh, to use a maximum of 4,000. Um, and then the recycled water is the five-year average. Okay, next. 
Okay, so I'll go back, go back on. Uh, so current supplies are projected assuming drought conditions for 2022 um, because current rainfall totals are less than 60% of normal. Um, we'll walk through these assumptions in the next few slides, um, but these are, these are the numbers here. Okay, next. Okay, so this this slide this table for three in the report is a summary of um, the supply capacity includes the current year drought supply and then two more years of drought. So 2023, 2024, um, and then it also shows 2030 as a normal year to just illustrate that we do have new supply sources coming online in the future. Next. Okay, so the next few slides just walk through the assumptions for each um, water supply source. Um, and so uh, for um, for Lake for Casitas, Lake Casitas water, we're for 2022, the lake is at 34.7% uh, capacity. We're assuming that we'll stay in a stage three through this year but potentially, but would go to a stage four next year and the following year um, due to declining lake levels if the drought continues. Um, and those numbers are, are based on our, our sort of state, our stage one allocation for Casitas, uh, including completed projects in the area, and then um, taking that reduction based on the, the stage three or stage four. Next. Okay, for Ventura River, um, I'm using a, a supply projection for 2022 of, of 1,000 acre feet. Um, we got more rain this year than we did the previous year. Levels are up a little bit higher, um, but we um, the intake facility is not operable. Um, and so I projected out that Nywell 7 and 8 will be turned off by the end of May. Um, and that gets us to around a thousand acre feet. Um, for future years, I'm using a 1298 is still the single driest year, um, or the production that happened during the single driest year. Um, it's still lower than the production we got from last year. So that's the number I'm, I'm using for future years uh, for now. Next. All right, for Mound Basin. Um, and um, we're back up to 3,500 for this year. Um, we did um, rehab two wells in Mound Basin this year in uh, Mound Well 1 and then um, Victoria Well 2 is coming back online uh, momentarily. And then we are anticipating that Mound 3 will be online by the summer. Um, so that will get us up to 3,500. Um, and then uh, for 2023 and 2024, Mound Well 2 should be coming online um, sometime next year. And so we should be able, that will give us a backup well. Um, so we should be able to get up to 4,000 um, in the next couple of years. Next. Okay, so for Oxnard Plain, we're still at 5304. Um, Fox Can um, has implemented their allocation system, but has not implemented any ramp downs. Um, so we still, our allocation is still at 5304. Um, there have been discussions on projects. There's a lawsuit going on, um, but our best information right now is that um, in order to achieve the GSP, we will need a linear ramp down um, to the sustainable yield by 2040. So the 2023 and 2024 supply projections are based on that um, that ramp down. Since the ramp down has been delayed to this year, the numbers changed slightly from last year, but it's still that assumption that we're going to ramp down to um, the sustainable yield by 2040. Next. Okay, for Santa Paula, um, we did Sadaquai Well 3 was down a little bit this year, but it is back up and running and it's been rehabbed. Um, and so it's looking like based on um, the flow rates coming out of that well, um, 
we're looking at being back up in the 3000 range um, for the next three years um, for, for Santa Paula. Um, Setequoia well number four is still in the planning stages, um, but likely not producing water until 2025. Next. And then just recycled water, we updated the average um, from uh, the five year average of 2017 to 2021. It went up one acre foot um, based on the increased recycled water uses this year. So our current projection for recycled water is 577. And again, that's we're we're using um, here the number the the amount of recycled water that's actually used every year versus our capacity um, or permitting allowance on that to be conservative. Okay, next. Okay, so now that we've gone through the demand and the supply projections, um, the next part of the report compares those um, to determine if a water shortage stage is triggered. Um, the 2020 water shortage event contingency plan, which we updated last year, uh, defines the water shortage stages, the triggers, and the demand reduction goals. Um, water shortage stages are triggered when demands are projected to be greater than supply. Next. So, our, uh, to calculate whether or not we're in a shortage stage, we look at our supply projection, which is 17,224 acre feet. Our demand projection is 14,269. Um, but we do, as part of the uh, water shortage contingency plan, says a climate adjustment factor of 5% uh, based on our current. Um, rainfall percentage at being less than 60% of normal. Um, and so the adjusted demand projection is 14,092, which is still less than our supply projection of 17,000. So uh, a water shortage stage is not triggered because the demand projection is less than the supply projection. Next. Okay, and this just um, this slide just uh, illustrates illustrates that um, near term demand and supply comparison. Um, um, you can see that uh, while the Oh, yes. Okay. So it's, it just shows that um, if rainfall totals for the next 2 years remain below average, and then the gap between demand and supply will narrow slightly, uh, but demands will not exceed supplies as long as customers continue to conserve at recent levels. So all these projections that we have here um, on the demands assume that the current conservation um, persists. And so while we're not um, enacting why a water shortage stage is not necessary based on our current demand and supply projections, we are encouraging um, our customers to continue conserving um, because, because that's what these assumptions are based on. Next. Okay, and so this, um, this slide just illustrates the table uh, on the previous slide, showing that um, the the orange line of our um, supply projections is greater than uh, the blue bars of our demand projections. Next. Okay. So the the 2022, 2022 CWR focuses on near-term supply and demand comparisons because the assumptions in the 2020 urban water management plan that we completed last year are still valid. Um, so, but figure 6-2 shows the five-year drought projections for supply and demand through 2020, 45, 2045. And these values are taken directly from the 2020 urban water management plan, um, table 2-8 and table 3-8. Um, Right now, just only the graph is in the CWRR, but we're going to add the table as well so that 
folks can see the, the numbers uh, clearly um, in the report. And so what this graph illustrates is that the new supplies are necessary in order for supplies to remain greater than demands in the future. Um, and the orange, the yellow bar here, state water is shown as adding to the supply. Um, but in some years as it's being utilized for uh, blending for water quality purposes, it might, it may not add to the groundwater production. It might replace a, a portion of the groundwater production. So, um, that that bar may be uh, smaller in certain years. I used 1100 because that I wanted this chart to be consistent with the 2020 urban water management plan this year and future years. We can update and you know, revise those numbers. Um, and then was also assuming that Ventura Water Pure will provide 2,800 acre feet in 2030, and then 4,000 acre feet from 2035 through 2045. Next. Okay, so next steps for the report are um, we'll receive comments tonight and written comments as well um, through um, next Friday, April 1st. Um, you can send those to Amanda. And then um, at the next, at the April Water Commission meeting, we'll have a discussion of the comment matrix and the final draft. And then we'll take the final CWR to City Council in June. Next. So this recommendation tonight is just to um, receive the written report and oral presentation and provide comments on the CW, 2022 CWRR. <laughs> okay, Amelia, do we have any individuals who've submitted public comments or indicated they wish to speak on this item? We do not. Oh, All right. I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm, I apologize. Um, Mr. Burnham, he actually would like to comment. All right, let's hear that now. Paper, I made you a panelist. You can go ahead and unmute your mic and turn on your camera. Good afternoon. Good evening, folks. Can you hear me? Yeah. The only question I have is you had an area where you could put comments on the CWRR. Is that available to the public to use the same email address to forward comments on it? I would ask uh, staff to answer that question where the public can submit comments. I yeah, that, I, is yeah. Our, that is our intent. Yeah, we normally have them submit comments to the same address, yes. Thank you. Thank you. That was my only question because it really wasn't articulated in there. Thank you. Thank you. All right, commissioners, any questions or comments? Commissioner Clyte. Yes, thank you. Um, we just started reading and going through this, uh, but uh, on table 3, 4, where uh, you list the different uh, water demand factor classifications, the different classes of users, essentially. And I was curious about the Ventura Botanical Gardens as being a major user of water. Um, which is not a surprise. It's a, it's a large garden. I'm a, a member and supporter of the Ventura Botanical Gardens. And if you haven't been up there recently, you should go soon because it's really beautiful. Uh, but um, how much of that 134 acre feet a year is that coming from uh, reclaimed water or um, recycled water? Because uh, they're, they're one of the major users in the city. So, yeah, so, um, Commissioner Clyde, I can talk to that. So the botanical gardens had a master plan, um, several years ago, and that is where that number of 134 acre feet per year came from. We have heard from them that it's going to be substantially less because they are looking at recycled water, et cetera. Um, and so that number will be revised in the future. We do not have a revised number yet though. Oh, so they won't be able to provide it in time for this report to no. be finalized. Okay. But I know there's tanks up there and they are getting recycled water. I see the water truck going. 
Good. Um, I don't have any other questions or comments at this time. Commissioner Huebner. Hi, thanks. Uh, just a few questions. Uh, Jenny, uh, great job on this report. Uh, improves every year and I was able to, maybe because I've been doing this for so long, um, it's pretty easy now for me to find the information. And, and of course, with the, the strikeout mark out, it's, it's good to see uh, what's been changed. Let's just start uh, Fox Canyon. Uh, is there any indication that they may draft or propose an emergency Ordinance, I bring this up because the conditions that we're experiencing in terms of the drought. Very similar to what was occurring in 2012, 2013, um, having been there and, and actually drafted that emergency ordinance. Any indications? I, I have not heard anything. We don't have any indications, but I don't know that we had any indications the last time either. So um, it is something that. Could happen. Okay, and I just point that out. That would be about a if, if they were to go back to same emergency ordinance e allocation for the city. That would be about a fifteen hundred acre foot cut. Okay. Uh, next question. Moving on to Casitas. Uh, I just curious. Looking at table three and the various water shortage stages. Um, what is the dead pool? And the lake. Uh, what percentage is that where they can no longer physically take water? Because certainly, it, it, let's say five percent, or certainly zero percent, you're not going to get any any water. If you don't have this information, perhaps you know mm -hmm. when this report comes back, that could be something. Um, provide us with. Yeah, I'm. I'm not sure. Um, the stage four is based on going below thirty percent mm -hmm. of level, and then. Stage five is below 20%. Um, I don't remember exactly what the dead pool is, and I, I don't want to guess. Yeah, no, it's it's what I'm you know, the critical water shortage at stage five at 25 to zero um, is, is where I'm kind of getting to in terms of it's not going to be a 50% reduction, it's going to be a zero, it's going to be a 100% reduction. And then uh, lastly, do you have any information on Ventura River and the flow studies you mentioned with the State Board and the Department of Fish and Wildlife? What's what's the status on that flow study? Those are ongoing. Um, fish and Wildlife has released some of their um, their study results. The State Water Resources Control Board is still finalizing their model. Um, and taking comments, um, we do not anticipate any, um, terminations from those agencies in the next year or more. But I think you could expect that they're going to issue some kind of flow restrictions or limitations as a part of that study. I mean, I, I would anticipate yeah. that that would be. It's it, yes, that's possible, but the timeline for that is not this coming year. Certainly, but coming in the next couple of years, correct? And I'm not, and I'm not arguing with the, the numbers that you put into the table. I think, I think if you're lucky, if you get a thousand, but for argument's sake, I think that's probably the best you can do at this point. I'm just looking at sort of the out years in terms of reductions that are going to happen in the Ventura River. And then at the uh, Casitas at the lake. So those are are real concerns that I have in terms of how much water will be provided from those sources. Um, that yeah. concludes my questions and comments. Okay, Commissioner McCombs. Um, two questions. Uh, first of all, in Table Two Dash One, um, I'm sorry, I don't remember which page that's on. Um, but it shows that there have been no single family completions. Is that because we are intentionally excluding all of the homes that were completed as rebuilds as a result of the Thomas fire? Because the presumption is that there's not any net new demand. 
Um, I'm not. I don't think we are excluding the Thomas fire homes. I'm not certain the answer to that question. I'll have to look into it. Okay. If you could, um, okay. and second, um, my question is, and, and let me preface it by saying, I'm not suggesting we want to pay for another demand factor analysis, but my question is, as a result of those projects that have been completed since we adopted the revised demand factors, have you all looked at the AMI data to validate the actual consumption for those new projects to have some sort of a reality check to say, yeah, those are good numbers. We're pretty much on track or hmm, maybe that will need to be reviewed in the future. We have not done that yet. Um, our current schedule for demand factor review is every five years. Um, but if there's a request to do it sooner, we could do that. Well, I guess my, my request would be, it seems to me that all of, you know, that there have been a number of new projects that have come online since then, most of which are going to be multifamily units. But with the AMI system, knowing that, you know, I would assume all those new units are connected to the, the new AMI meters that are in place, it would seem to be, you know, a pretty quick and dirty Excel type analysis that someone on staff could do to just, you know, run a quick reality check to say, yeah, the, you know, the multifamily factor is pretty much on track or, wow, it's really out of whack. Maybe we need to reconsider, some, you know, an analysis. Um, then two other comments. I left a message for Monica this afternoon. If you, since it is very helpful for us to present the comments from the various commissioners in a matrix format, if you know which format you're going to use to do that, be it Excel or Word, my suggestion is you send that template out to us and those of us that feel comfortable using whichever application that is can put our comments directly into that template and save you all a lot of cutting and pasting. Um, or to, if you would get that to us tomorrow um, so that we have the opportunity to use that in our review rather than, you know, everyone doing it in some different format. So you have to cut and paste everything. And then lastly, speaking to your point on you know, all of this assumes that the public continues with the conservation that's been in place. Um, at a future meeting, I'd like an update from, you know, the communication side of things on what messaging you're doing to the public in terms of driving home that point. Um, I get a lot of um, similar communication from other water agencies based on my professional experience, and they're doing that quite effectively. Um, so I just wanna make sure that we are taking the opportunity using all the various mediums that Ventura Water has to be communicating that message to the public and not just saying it in this forum. Thanks. Okay, Commissioner Ackerman. Well, thank you, Jenny, for a very complete report. You answered all the questions that I had in reviewing the, the TCNR for uh, comprehensive water resource report for several times now, but Anyway, those were answered, but to answer uh, Commissioner Cleet's question about Ventura Botanical Gardens, uh, I asked someone who is uh, very involved with that program as soon as I read that uh, particular number, and she stated that they're using a significant amount, amount of water that is recycled water, and they have purple pipe everywhere uh, up at the garden, so I'm going to go up and check it out uh, next week and see what's going on. But I think, like she said, they're using a very small amount of potable water. And that's about it. Commissioner Breger. Um, uh, it's a very, comment that I had was very thorough report, um, very voluminous, and uh, looking forward to for the comments. But um, and I agree with uh, with the previous commissioner regarding. Um, the method in which uh, would help the you know staff uh, kind of put comments together. So um, looking forward to that if that's going to happen. So anyway, other than that, I have no other comments. Okay, thank you. And my comment is uh, the report looks 
very good and it's very helpful every year. I know it's a lot of work to put together, but it always gives me a good sense that I have an understanding of where the city's at with its water resources. So it, it has value to uh, at least me. So thank you very much for all your hard work. Thank you for having right. me the chair and thank you, Bob. Oh, pardon me? I think you had one more commissioner perhaps to ask. Oh, I did. Did I forget someone? Who did I forget? Commissioner McCord, I'm sorry. Uh, don't be. The way I disappeared last time, I wouldn't be surprised. <laughs> uh, no, um, this um, this really is a grand improvement over wh where we started years and years ago. Other than that, I have no other questions and no other comments. Okay, thank and you I for the correction. The, the uh, botanical garden is beautiful up there. If anyone can go up there, it's, it's great. And I also was curious with the uh, tanks on the hill where the water is coming. So I, I got that information tonight. Thank you. Okay. Uh, next item, state water interconnection project update, Betsy Cooper. And Betsy um, could not log back in, but I think she's on the phone. We're gonna try to get her hold over here. Okay. Amanda, is Betsy oh, can you hear on me? the phone? Yes, Hello? we can hear you. Go okay, ahead. Awesome. Okay, my turn for technical difficulties. I lost my internet and um, anyway, good. Good evening, uh, commissioners. Um, as you know, my name is Betsy Cooper, Assistant General Manager of Water Resources. And um, as requested by Water Commission at the November meeting, I'm continuing to give updates on state water interconnection project for the next several months. Um, so, in regards to the agency agreements, um, last month I mentioned that CASITA selected an ad hoc committee and hired a consultant to help prepare what we're referring to as the exchange agreement. And this would be an agreement between the city and Cayegas that would define how CASITAS would receive deliveries of their state water allocation through the interconnection project. So um, as I stated last month, CASITAS wants to first understand the terms of this exchange agreement before agreeing to the interagency agreement, which was presented to the Water Commission um, last year. So update, um, CACITAS is working on the exchange agreement. We did meet with their staff to discuss the proposed terms and we have provided some comments. Um, CACITAS um, indicated late last week that they will be meeting with their ad hoc committee again. Um, they're trying to schedule a meeting um, in the next week or two. And so that's really where things stand. Um, we're hoping to present a draft exchange agreement to Water Commission potentially at the May meeting. Um, CACITAS has indicated that they should be able to um, get to the interagency agreement within a few weeks after the exchange agreement is um, settled. So, um, Hopefully things will move um, move forward on that. Um, as far as a design update, um, the design consultant Stantec um, continues to focus on completing the preliminary design report and um, a hydraulic analysis. Um, and so we should be receiving a draft of this soon. Um, at the uh, last Water Commission meeting, there were questions about the results of the pipe loop study that Stantec completed. Um, so we are going to be having Stantec provide a presentation on that study to Water Commission, which is tentatively scheduled for next month. Um, but I do want to emphasize that the focus of that study is not on TDS, but is on determining how to safely introduce Cayugas water into the city's distribution system. So the two um, water sources do have large differences in certain water quality parameters like um, 
total dissolved solids concentrations, um, also alkalinity, calcium pH, those are a few of the components. So the introduction of the new Cayugas water source, if it's not properly done, could um, destabilize any existing scales that have built up inside the city's water pipes. And this could lead to aesthetic issues such as turbid water or taste or odor issues. So the purpose of this study is to make recommendations on the conditioning and monitoring of the water as it is introduced into our system. So this is a requirement of the Division of Drinking Water. It's something they will be looking at very closely. And um, as far as water quality benefits of state water in terms of lowering the TDS levels, um, that is more of a city operational issue and city staff does plan on further addressing that at also at the same meeting. Um, but I, I wanted to let you know what the purpose of the blending study is and, and what Stantec will be presenting there. So, and lastly, another item that came up last month was regarding permits. And I wanted to give a better answer on what per construction permits will be required for this project. Um, I indicated last month that an Army Corps 408 permit is not being required for this project. So that is great news. Um, permits for the horizontal directional drilling river crossing should be limited to um, a California Department of Fish and Wildlife 1602 permit. And um, that's for um, provide a mitigation plan if there's an accidental release of uh, drilling fluids in the river. And also a Ventura County Watershed Protection District encroachment and water course permits. Um, we also have several other encroachment permits, Caltrans, um, we will be crossing Vineyard Avenue. We'll be crossing a couple county roads. So we'll have county encroachment permits. And then of course, um, within the city of Ventura, um, pipelines will be located in the street. So we'll be getting encroachment permits for those. We also have a railroad crossing. So we'll be getting an encroachment permit from VCTC. And then, um, um, we'll be getting State Water Resource Control Board NPDES permit, which is required for all projects that are disturbing more than an acre of land. And lastly is, like I mentioned before, the Division of Drinking Water will um, be requiring a permit for adding the new water source. So um, anyway, I wanted to give a better answer because I felt like I, I uh, um, didn't answer that too well last month. So that's concludes my update and I'm happy to take any questions. All right, Amelia, do we have anybody who submitted public comments or indicates they want to speak on this item? No, we do not. All right, then let's go through the commissioners and see if they have any questions or comments. Commissioner Clyde. Yes, uh, thank you, Betsy, for that. And uh, I was concerned that uh, we didn't have a constructive discussion on the water hardness issue. So I'm heartened to hear that you will be giving us a more thorough report on that. Um, I would like to request that uh, we also, uh, I need better understanding on this overall hardness issue. I keep hearing it being uh, discussed as an issue for the east side of Ventura, but I can tell you as a downtown resident, the water is hard here, our buildings on water softener, uh, and also as someone who is uh, at the Bell Arts factory on the west side, the water is very hard there as well. So beside uh, just a, a the mixing issue and how that's going to be dealt with uh, either at the next meeting or, uh, or where you're discussing this or maybe at a future meeting, I'd like to hear a more, and I would recommend, and if I need to make a motion to add this to a future um, commissioner meeting, that we discuss water hardness as a citywide issue and that the Water Commission be given uh, a much thorough, uh, better understanding of how this affects all of the residents and what the anticipated effects are uh, of 
um, both the state water project and then eventually water pure. And then also along with that, how are we communicating this with our consumers? Because I went on the um, Ventura Water website and I could find nothing about hardness. And it, and yet it means um, council meetings on uh, different parts of town. And of course, all you have to do is look at your pipes and the corrosion and know it's an issue. Uh, so uh, I would like to recommend that um, beside the, the update you're going to give us that we have further discussion on this issue. I think it, it keeps coming up and I think we need uh, better communication with our uh, city residents on it. Okay, thank you. Is Betsy, is that something that you feel you can incorporate into that blending uh, presentation coming up? Yes, we will do the best we can. And thank I you. would be happy thank to you. send you a list of questions if, if that would help you, Betsy, or if you can do it through. Uh, Amelia or um, yeah, whoever, however that's appropriate. Okay, thanks, Nova. Yeah, we can we can talk. Okay, great. Thank you. All right, Commissioner Hubner. Uh, yeah, first I want to wholeheartedly support uh, Commissioner Clyde's uh, request. Um, brought up specific issue and and detail last meeting. Um, I think it is worthy of, of, a, of discussion and more information. So I support it uh, exactly as she uh, presented that uh, this should be looked at from all residents. Uh, it's going to be a one water system at some point and uh, as we bring various sources of water. So that should be part of the discussion and uh, I look forward to that discussion. Hopefully next meeting, if not uh, a future meeting shortly. Um, secondly, uh, I'm, I'm looking at uh, the things. Thank you, Betsy, for the update and, and the various issues here. Uh, I'll just say that, uh, you know, continue to have my concerns about the progress. Um, being patient, I truly hope that by June, have these agreements uh, in draft form for us to consider. By that point, it will already been over a year that this commission looked at that issue. We'll be getting close to the time of October. Well, let's just say three or four months and approaching a year. That we had this discussion. Um, so I do hope that we will get these the first agreement by the May meeting and by our June meeting. See uh, the interagency back before us. Uh, the design and uh, I heard it. February meeting that they were uh, looking to have that again in our discussion back in October, November, March was the meeting that we were supposed to have things done. So, um, continue to look at that timeline for to get done. So, uh, and I appreciate the update on the permitting. Um, do hope that applications have been uh, prepared and are uh, pending in front of these agencies, at least the ones with the critical path one. Very much, uh, uh, and that's all I have for today. All right, thank you, Commissioner McCombs. No questions tonight, thank you, Commissioner McCord. Uh, yes, um, uh, Betsy, I appreciate your uh, manner of handling the uh, Casitas issue on the um, interconnection agreement. I know that. Uh, setting deadlines that are firm it does not lend itself to uh, discussions. Uh, on the other hand, I and I do believe we should continue to work towards um, entering into agreement if it's possible. But I would just suggest to the other commissioners that this is not a new project. It's not new for the Casitas folks. And I, at some point, we have to make a decision on how to finance what we're going to build. 
uh, I really would like to hear in April how they're coming on their exchange agreement. And then in May, the interconnect agreement. Other than that, that's my only comment. Thank you, Commissioner Ackerman. See, thanks for your uh, information on all the permits and uh, the work with Casitas. That uh, sounds like a pain in the neck. Um, I want to uh, also throw in uh, my agreement with uh, Commissioner Client and uh, also Hubner talking about water quality and what do we what is water quality and what is it we promise the people? Uh, what would that water look like uh, when we get the um, state water connect and water peer on board. So I think they're waiting to hear uh, our rate pairs, you know, are we going to have better water in the East end or is it going to remain the same? So uh, what is that objective? Thank you, Commissioner Breger. Um, anyway, the, thank you, Betsy. It was a good report and uh, um, I have no questions at this time. Okay. And I would say good work with Casitas. I know how 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 much work that is to move those kinds of things forward. It takes a lot of agreement reviewing and working with people. So glad to hear that those are moving along. All right, okay. thank you, everyone. Okay. All right, the next item is tentative schedule and general manager report. Thank you, Chair Mulligan and commissioners. Um, okay, I'll give you, uh, you have your schedule in front of you there and we'll talk about that a little bit at the end there. Um, just some general information. I don't know if many of you knew Frank Bromenschenkel. Um, he passed away last week, so I just wanted to kind of acknowledge that, you know, he was really active in the Santa Paula Basin and had a great wealth of knowledge when it came to Ventura County water issues and he was always willing to share um, his opinions and views and his knowledge, and he's going to be greatly missed. I first worked with him probably 25 years ago when he was general manager of the Santa Paula Water Works that eventually went into the city of Santa Paula when I was working um, at Kennedy Jenks. So anyway, I will greatly miss Frank. He knew all about water rights and, um, and you know, Alta and Satakoy Water Company and all kinds of issues with Box Canyon, he was a really helpful person. So again, he'll be greatly missed. Um, staffing update, as I mentioned, Amanda has been promoted, yay. Um, several recruitments are underway for vacant positions throughout the city, not just Ventura Water. Um, some update on the California Water and Wastewater Rearages Program. So staff has completed the application for the wastewater um, arrearages program money's coming back. We've already done the water and we received, um, I think it was $324,000 around for the water. And those have now been credited to people's accounts or customers accounts and letters have been sent out to them. So now we're hoping to get refunds for the wastewater debts. Um, we are also going to start resuming um, our normal billing procedures on May 1st which was suspended during COVID um, due to the governor's orders that were lifted on December 31st of this last year. So those are gonna be including assessment late fees, door tag fees. Eventually there'll be water shutoffs for non-payments, but we are gonna continue to work with customers to develop payment plans, you know, that they need due to hardships as a result of COVID. And we have done a, a big outreach effort, thanks to Stephen, Glenn and others. And so those have been mailers that go out, information in our billing. So um, that is going to start again on, on May 1st. And then Ventura Water, um, past council items that were on Ventura Water, for Ventura Water, we got approval for the First Amendment to their general services agreement with Ferguson Enterprises for the AMI uh, infrastructure project. And then upcoming council items, we're hoping to take the agreement for the state water multi-year transfer. That's with San Gregorio on April 11th is a tentative date for that. And then if you look at our calendar, the tentative schedule. So next month in April, we'll have our rates check-in, the first meeting there. And then we'll have the final draft of the Comprehensive Water Resources Report. 
And then, um, as Betsy mentioned, we're going to add in hopefully the pipe loop, loop study results as well as water quality information that we can have a discussion on. And then again, our state water interconnection project update. And for future agenda items, I can put down something as, as far as um, what I heard tonight from you, you know, conservation update, communications, and we can have Stephen give an update on that because we have been continuing the outreach process to make sure that people still continue to conserve water. And that Great, is what I have for you. tonight. All right, Amelia, do we have anybody submitted public comments on this or indicated they want to talk? We do not. Okay, let's go through the commissioners and just see if they have any questions or comments. Commissioner Clyde. No further comments, thank you. Commissioner Hubner. Uh, at least tentatively, I'd like to see on the schedule uh, actually these agreements. Comment made by Commissioner McCord, um, but at least uh, perhaps at the uh, the May meeting and the June meeting. Yeah, so I the um, pressure on to see this the, to keep these negotiations to a conclusion or not. Yeah, and Commissioner Hubner, I did put them on for the future agenda items, but we can, you know, move one to potentially April or May. We just don't know if that's going to be doable. Well, not for April for sure, sure. Um, but possibly for May. Okay, sorry, I didn't. I'm just looking at it now. I didn't see it. So if that was your intent, thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Mr. McCombs. No other comments. Thank you. Mr. McCord. No comments. Thank you. Commissioner Ackerman. No comments. Thank you very much. Commissioner Breger. No comments. Thank you very much. Great. And I have one comment and one question. My comment is thank you for the schedule. It's very helpful. And we understand that items shift around and it's it's in flux, but the schedule really helps us get a feel for what's coming up. Um, and a question, Susan, when do we get to meet in person? All right, great question. So we had our first uh, meeting last night for council and it was hybrid meeting. So we did, there was some discussions today on what does the next meeting for planning commission, water commission look like? And so we're, we don't know if it's gonna be hybrid or not, but it will probably definitely be in person. Um, whether it be, it's probably be at City Hall, and that's, those are the kind of information we're, we're kind of mulling through right now, so in the next couple of weeks, we will send you an update on that, but we think it will be in person next month. That would be wonderful. Yes. You can actually see each other without video going out or other things. Wonderful. Thank you. Okay. Um, public communications. Uh, Amelia, do we have any written public comments received or any members of the public uh, who wish to speak during public comments? No written comments, but we do have two members of the public that would like to speak. First, we have Trevor Gotsman and then Bert Handy. All right. So we're going to meet a panelist. Go, you can go ahead and um, unmute your mic. Thank you. On your camera. Hi, good evening, everybody. Thank you. I know um, I think Amelia missed me at the beginning on question one on the, on topic two, um, Santa Clara River, but thank you. It's really, this is, um, you know, we take it so for granted, the water, and we're sort of 90% or however much we are of water. Um, and so uh, this is really helpful information. I've got to thank everybody, uh, city staff and uh, the work you do. The commissioner, Susan, Miss Mulligan, thank you, thank you, thank you, everybody on this commission for asking their questions, for keeping us honest. And um, it's my job to be here as a member of the community who uses these resources to find out what I can help, how I can help. And the communication is essential. And I think that position seven, what community development department needs to, it, it, this is essential, the community, us, the users, the end user, the last mile, sometimes that drop, it, it's a little drip button. 
that we each take. We need to acknowledge it and respect it. And the only way we do it is by facing each other. Yes, are you going to finally, maybe we'll meet in person. I meet everybody at the dog park, but, and that brings up this other point. We need hybrid, we are need to adapt and flow like the water does and wrap around and keep things, um, keep things healthy. Yeah, the, the dissolved solid and stuff like that. We uh, have to attend to the hard waters and soften things. I mean, the, this discussion that's going on in the national level with the Senate hearings, with the, um, uh, you know, it's a wonderful exercise in civility and respect. And we see the real truth quite clearly. And this is what we're doing here now. So I keep encouraging it, but keep opening up, include the places. It's very difficult. I have commitments to creatures that are outside my control and that do not, aren't allowed in your rooms, but they're allowed in the dog parks and that place, open space in the public spaces. And that's where we reach the public. We can't always get here on time. So the hybrid is going to be essential. I feel it is, uh, you know, COVID came for a reason and we're all slowing down and we're all smelling the roses and learning to breathe heavy, you know, and drink heavy water, but deal with it in a healthy way and diminish and um, respect. So that I think the botanical gardens, all of these things, the more we communicate with each other, as I said, I'll spread the word is what I the way I do it. But I thank you all again for just keeping this alive and asking the real questions. I, I can, I've got a booklet of notes that I've made here, but You've covered questions. I'm just at school. This is an education, as we all are. I say we own the only thing we own is our intent and the action behind it. And as long as we keep that intent and we can smell and we can sniff out the ugly stuff and we honest and face it, we all got to know what it is and what to be aware of and how to tend to it and pick it up and care for it. Like, uh, you know, our police chief and fire chief, no, they're never always on duty. We're always on duty. So all of us and we just got to remind each other you know those that don't take the responsibilities those are the kids they need to be reminded they need to eventually grow up and take that responsibility but we need to show them they need to understand at least why but to know is the way to grow up thank you very much everybody much appreciated thank you and bert i've made you a panelist you can go ahead and unmute your mic and turn on your camera Good evening, Commission. It was a very good meeting. And the only thing I'll say in regards to the questions that were asked about Casitas, their dead pool is 950 acre feet according to their study, their uh, demand study, which is being presented tomorrow at their meeting at 5 o'clock. So if you're interested in seeing what's going on with that, you can join the meeting tomorrow. The actual study and demand study is actually on their website, and it's under item 8G, which will be tomorrow. And that information from the 950 acre feet as a dead pool is listed in the study. Thank you. Thank you, Bert. That was very helpful. All right, Commissioner of Communications. Uh, we'll go around. Um, Commissioner Clyde. Um, did we already do that? <laughs> I don't know. Well, this is anyway, just general I communications. It's Oh, but just in general. Okay. Well, happy International Water Day today, everyone. Um, so it's so appropriate we're meeting today, and um, uh, it's great. I appreciate everybody's efforts on this commission and with Ventura Water and the members of the public who attend. Thank you. Thank you. Commissioner Hubner. Yes, just one. Uh, Miles, are you on? I, I had an article that was forwarded to me uh, regarding um, his article in the Ohio Valley News, the Superior Court decision about the city's Pueblo rights, uh, specifically rights to groundwater in the upper Ventura watershed. Uh, can you comment, or if not, can you come back to us at some point with some information on this? Uh, Are you aware yes, of Commissioner time? Hubner, I am here, and no decision has made, been made in the case on the city's uh, Pueblo rights. However, there is one party that um, has uh, attempted uh, to uh, get a ruling uh, 
for the city to have to amend its complaint to define in more detail its Pueblo rights allegations. So that's the current status on that issue. Okay. Uh, request that a future, when you do receive a decision, that that decision be presented to this commission in some form? Uh, yes, I'll share that with the commission. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, Commissioner McCombs. Nothing, thank you. Mr. McCord. Nothing. I look forward to but Mr. Hogan's uh, re report on um, what was just discussed about the litigation. Commissioner Ackerman. Yeah, my compliments to Ventura Water. Um, uh, I received my monthly water bill. I find it very informative. There's a lot of information there and uh, very easy to understand and a lot of um, different ways to minimize the use, recognize areas where I can um, uh, conserve my water, and I think the more we share with the public, maybe in that format, because everyone receives their bill, uh, the more they understand where we are and where we're going. I think they should be updated pretty routinely, just like we are at each commission meeting. So, um, very good job. And I never said, never thought I'd say I like getting a bill, but I find it very informative, and <laughs> that's, what, that's what good government government is: informing people. Yes, thank you. Commissioner Breger. Yes, I have um, a couple updates. So, uh, first of all, for disclosure purposes, I uh, had a meeting uh, uh, with the chair, with Chair Mul Mulligan on uh, February 28th, and we discussed transitioning to, uh, to the Ventura Water Pier ad hoc, uh, ad hoc committee. And uh, she also informed me that the that a scheduled uh, tour of the Las Virgin is water uh, district their uh, pure water demonstration facility uh, on March 3rd and that uh, she recommended that I attend. Well, I did attend that and um, that tour and it was very good and I, I had a, uh, I took a few notes and I'll go over that re really quick. Uh, the tour started off with meeting uh, Las Virginia uh, operate, uh, operators, engineers and management staff um, and associated, that was associated with the Pure Water Project. Uh, in attendance was personnel from Ventura Water Department and the city manager's office. Um, after introductions, we saw we saw a video that generally described their Pure Water Project. In general, the the Las Virginas Pure Water Project takes a uh, highly uh, treated recycled water, which would otherwise be used for irrigation uh, or discharge to the Malibu Creek, and purify it to drinking water standards using uh, proven advanced uh, purification technology, kind of what, basically what we're doing here in our Ventura Water Pier project. This purification project is what we viewed, what we viewed on the tour, and it consisted of three advanced purification processes that included membrane filtration and ultra ultra filtration, reverse osmosis, and ultra uh, violet sterilization. Um, it is my understanding that their uh, full scale facility, when complete, will have a capacity to produce up to 6 million gallons of pure water each day and become a local resource to be used for drinking purposes. This pure water project is projected to source, uh, to, projected to source up to about 15% uh, of, the, of the JPA's. Uh, Joint uh, Power Association water supply locally. In other words, the project will create a new local source for, uh, of water for this region. The process water will be pumped and stored at the Las Virginies Reservoir, where it will be mixed with existing water sources and then uh, processed and introduced into their uh, potable water system. The project is currently in the design and permitting phase and the agency anticipates construction to begin in 2025. They anticipate using design build as the delivery process for the project. However, they did not indicate what variant of design build uh, process they would use. Uh, funding for the project will come from state and federal grants and also low interest loans. Uh, at the end of the tour, we all had an opportunity to drink the water that was being processed at the time 
and then basically it was it tasted very well. Uh, so uh, looking forward to our project. And uh, when I went to that uh, went to the tour, uh, I met some people there that uh, that I knew from you know working at City of Malibu and also uh, when I was doing consulting work uh, for Las Virginias. Anyway, so it was uh, it was kind of uh, fun to go down there and and if we want to use them as a resource, we could. So, uh, but uh, anyway, that was that was my comments. Thank you. Thank you. And I just have one comment. I would like to thank Amelia for making me an agenda and highlighting it so that I don't forget to ask if there's public comments. It was very helpful. Thank you, Amelia. You are very welcome. And I will also give credit to Amanda for suggesting that that was created for you. So it was a good idea. Um, and I believe that it's time to adjourn the meeting. We'll see you all next month, hopefully in person. And the meeting is adjourned. Good night. Good night. Thank you. Good night. Thank you.